hello thanks for watching another video with me um, this one's a little bit different because I've actually been on the trip already I didn't make a video before I went because uh, I wasn't exactly sure where I was going to go and what work I was going to do so and that was because of the weather uh, I was going in between two storms um, and I wasn't quite sure what the weather would allow me to do so in the end what I did was I was away with a friend and uh, we did a kind of day walk which you'll see in a minute uh, and then stayed in a bothy. We thought about doing a slightly easier route which would have then required a, a camp but uh, we were able to do the route that we wanted to uh, and that let us then land in the bothy for the night which was a bit more pleasant so uh, uh, hopefully you'll see it was a good uh, trip. The weather was uh, a wee bit windy and kind of uh, snow and ice and that sort of thing, but uh, it was really enjoyable being back out. I haven't been out in a couple of years, uh, really in full winter conditions um, because of COVID. So it was really good to, to get back out. What I thought I would do is uh, go through some of the kit that I take in winter uh, in case that's of, of interest to some people and I'll also put a link uh, or a timestamp that you can skip to if you're less interested in that. Um, so yeah this is really just uh, stuff I'm taking in a day walk and I'll kind of highlight some of the differences um, uh, from, from winter to autumn or summer. Uh, the first main difference is that I'm wearing a, a big heavy boot. Uh, I think these are a kilo or more each um, and the reason for that is that they're, uh, they're really stiff. You can see they don't bend. So that's a full winter boot and it's got this kind of cleft in it uh, that lets you attach a full crampon. Uh, so you can you can attach your crampon onto your boot um, and you can see that that's a fairly chunky uh, crampon. So first uh, difference in, in winter is footwear, uh, taking a full crampon and a full winter boot. On each foot that means I'm carrying over a two kilos on each foot which is huge. Uh, in summer then I'm wearing about 250 grams uh, so it's almost 10 times what I'll have on each foot in, in summer and you really feel it. You can probably hear and see in the video that's coming up that it's tiring work wearing them. You'll also see I was taking uh, an ice axe. I actually took two ice axes because uh, some of the work was pretty steep uh, so uh, kind of needed two ice axes. None of it was climbing but uh, very light scrambling I would say. Uh, so, so ice axe uh, both for going up and for safety when you're coming down. Um, the other thing that I do in winter in contrast to summer, in summer normally the map is kind of, the paper map is buried at the bottom of my bag um, and the compass may also be at the bottom of my bag because I use my phone uh, for for navigation. In winter what I do is I've got my compass here in my chest pouch so it's easily accessible and uh, the map just goes in the back of this wee chest pouch in here and that just means that it's right there if the phone dies or um, if you just need to walk in, in poor visibility it's easier to walk on a compass than it is on, on phone navigation. So it's all right there. There's always the temptation if it's in the back of the in, in, in the base of the bag not to get it out when you should. So if you've got it right there to hand then you get it out when you need to. So I always do that in, in winter. Um, I'll always take a head torch when I'm hill walking but in winter or, or even in, in spring and autumn I'll take two so I've got a backup you can see in the video coming up it was almost dark when we were coming off the hills I didn't really need the head torch um, but it could have easily gone to that the light short so you need to take a head torch 
but I always take a backup head torch as well in case something happens to this one. Um, and in addition to that, what I'll take is a couple of batteries. These are rechargeable batteries, so one of these will last um, I can't remember, eight hours, I think, and then I've got another one, and then I've got another one. So in addition to the two head torches, I've got three batteries, and that's important. I'll also take a power bank. Um, again, I, I always take that really, but that lets me charge my phone for navigation. It lets me charge the battery packs. Um, you know, having that redundancy across the, the system is much more important in winter than it is in summer. I'll always take a whistle uh, and I do that in, in winter. And in winter, I will also take a backup compass in case the compass I have breaks and the phone breaks. So there's quite a lot of redundancy in the navigation system uh, there. And also take a backup back battery pack in case something happens to that battery pack. So that's that. Uh, so that's kind of some of the safety. That's some of the safety elements for winter. That's a bit different to spring, summer and autumn uh, and that's why I take interested to hear what other people do uh, that's the same or different. Um, in terms of clothing for this trip, uh, just a very quick run through it. So I had a, a woolen base layer, had a fleece, And then the Gore-Tex jacket on top. And I found that was fine. It was reasonably cold. I think probably minus 5 with the wind chill down to minus 11. And that was fine for up top. Obviously the hat on. Um, I did take an additional jacket in case I was cold. This is a Paramo jacket that I could put underneath the Gore-Tex jacket. But I didn't end up wearing that. On my trousers, uh, on my legs, sorry, I wore these trousers. These are Paramo trousers. So the thing I like about these, you can put them on at the start of the walk and wear them all day. They're waterproof, uh, but they're also insulated. So I didn't wear any leggings or trousers underneath these. Just wear these um, and they, they're, you can wear them all day. They're kind of got this uh, padding. It's almost like a, a foam Set, uh, pad in both the seat and the knee um, and that's pretty useful if you need to kneel down or sit for a prolonged period of time it just provides some insulation so um, they're really heavy though they're, they're over a kilo so I only wear them in the in the depths of winter definitely not something for for wearing at other times of year because they're, they're very heavy and then uh, gloves Plenty of pairs of gloves, usually take three pairs of gloves for a trip um, and you can see in this pair they're pretty substantial gloves um, but more than the thickness of them I would say the number of them if gloves get wet then they're cold so uh, taking a couple of pairs of gloves is something I always do uh, and then the final thing just a uh, uh, ski goggles. Uh, I think I had to wear them once during the wee, that wee trip, um, just if the ice is blasting in your face. So that's some of the stuff that I take in winter. Hopefully that's interesting. Keen to hear what other people take kind of for a day walk. Hopefully soon get out for a camp um, as well as uh, a walk uh, over the next couple of weeks. So thanks for watching. Just passed under the Glenfinnan Viaduct. So we're pressing on, just left the main track. Heading up 
to the first one row. Up there, we start to gain some height. That's the second one row over there. And somewhere up there is the first. Fairly steep out there. Views beginning to open up. Snow at the moment, but uh, it's been a bit icy and slippy, and we're just heading up there into the clouds. It's the top of the first one, we're just up there, and that is the second over there. The views are opening up a wee bit. Fairly windy, fairly icy, but very nice. There's the bothy, you can see the fire's on. We came down and decided to stay in there last night rather than pitching the tents. Had a good evening. A few whiskies with uh, some of the other guys that were in there. And that's one of the hills we were up yesterday. The sun's just starting to catch 
the first Munro that we did yesterday there. You can see there's a lot of snow on it. And then there's the second one. Brilliant morning. The Glenfinnan Bridge just uh, as we finish almost uh, back at the start 